Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homey. Today, I'm gonna to try and inspire you with a few of my own advanced flows. Now, you might have seen already, but it's actually a free weekend for advanced flow. So if you're a Homey Pro user and you haven't yet tried advanced flow, go ahead and give it a go. I'll add a link up here where you can basically get directed to advanced flows to try out for yourself. And if you're already an advanced flow user, well, maybe this helps with a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of creativity for some advanced flows that you can create. Without further ado, let's dive straight into it. So I wanna create a couple of advanced flows. One that covers lighting of my smart home. A second that's gonna cover, well, climate control and heating. And a third that's gonna cover my entry point. So it's gonna use my video doorbell and we're gonna create an advanced flow for a doorbell. Let's start things off with my advanced flow for lighting. Hopefully by now you're all pretty familiar with the Homey web app. And if not, well, head to my.homey.app on your browser and go check it out. It basically gives you a desktop overview of all things Homey. And here you can also create your advanced flows. So let's head to the flow tab. And you'll see that I have a few folders and one's called advanced flows. Let's take a look at what I've set up for my lighting. And really this is kind of where a lot of people start with Homey, at least this is where I started. So I had a motion sensor and I had some smart lights and I wanted to turn on the smart lights when there was motion, pretty simple. And then you would create a flow that looks a little bit like this. So the zone became active that turns all lights on. And traditionally you'd have to then create a second flow that turns them off again when the zone is inactive. In this case, I can create them all on the same canvas. And actually a really quick way to do this is I'm just gonna highlight everything and copy and paste it down here. Gonna line it up just so it looks nice. And then what you can do is actually just head in and replace a flow card. The great thing about this is it actually brings you to the place where you selected the flow card, which means that if you're trying to interchange it with a flow card that's very similar, for example, this zone became inactive for, and specifically the hallway zone, I can select it really easily from here. Give it an option, let's say five minutes. So after the zone has been inactive for five minutes, I'm gonna turn all lights. And then actually I wanna replace this card as well with turn all lights off. Fill in device type. And there we go. I've sort of set up a very simple zone activity flow for my hallway. But <laughs> wait for it. Let's quickly repeat this for the other zones in my house. Just gonna right click and I'll show you that I can duplicate these, drag them down here. I can also add a, another note. Let's keep things a little bit organized here. So I'll say this is my living room because I also have a motion sensor set up in my living room or a door window sensor perhaps on the door leading to my living room. Whenever that is activated, I want the lights to turn on. So I've quickly replaced a few of those flow cards just to make sure that this is about my living room. Now, if I'm thinking about it, I actually don't want my living room to turn the lights off when the zone becomes inactive. I find that a little bit annoying. Let's say you're sitting on the couch, maybe there's no motion being detected, so the zone goes to inactive and then the lights suddenly turn off while you're just watching TV. So in this case, actually, I'm gonna delete the uh, turning off of the lights. And then what you can easily do in the same canvas, right? And this is not about zone activity, but then I'm gonna associate this with a light switch in my living room. All right, so now in a matter of a few minutes, I've set up zone activity for most of my home. And it was actually really easy to do. Now, this is not really advanced yet, right? So it's really nice to be able to do this from one place so I can go in and tweak the settings for all my smart lights and how that reacts with my motion sensors or window sensors all from this area, but it's not that complicated. So now what I wanna do is make this a little bit more advanced. I'm gonna add in, basically I wanna factor in the light intensity in my hallway to determine what dim level my light is at. 
So at a low light intensity, let's say at night, uh, basically when it's really dark in that room, I don't want the light to come on full brightness because then it's, well, too bright. Let's say I'm coming downstairs for a midnight snack or so and then the hallway light turns on at full brightness, it's a bit much. So I want it to turn on at about 50% dip level. So I'll set this up in the flow. Now the luminance is very particular to each home. So maybe you'll have to tweak this a little bit and figure out what works best. But let's say I'm gonna set it to 50. So when it's really dark in the hallway, I want the light to turn on at 50% dim level. Now that means I kind of have to break up this flow a little bit. So we're gonna drag the line up to my logic variable. And I actually wanna cancel this line going to turning the light on. Now at this point, what I can do is I'll have a check mark and an X, right? And that means that the condition has been met. So the luminance is less than 50. Then you'll go via this route. And if it hasn't, so the luminance is above 50, then we'll follow the X route. And then we can head down to just turning all lights on. And then maybe I'll also want to set the brightness of the specific light in my hallway. So I can add a then card, uh, because remember when you're just turning a light on, sometimes it can default to its previous set dim level. So in this case, I want that, well, when the luminous is at a high level, that it always turns at 100% dim level. Let's grab that hallway light and let's dim to, and then we can, well, actually this is perfect for up here. And then I can copy and paste it. We're gonna throw this at 100%. But in essence, that's an advanced flow for lighting. And this now determines my zone activity flows for my entire house, which is really nice. And you can then basically go in and add certain lights to different zones and they'll still interact in these flows. You can add new motion sensors or door window sensors and those will also still play into this role. That's the great thing about doing this. You don't have to go in and tweak it every time. All these devices you're adding to your home will just play a role in these flows. Well, that's the idea between behind a smart home, right? Now let's move on to climate control. So I've hopped over to my climate control advanced flow. And I've, well, started this off with a really basic um, flow that says when the time is 7.30 in the morning. If it's a weekday, then set the temperature to 20 degrees. And if it's a weekend, well, set the temperature to 21 and 21 in my bedroom as well. Now, in this case, I'm using Tado because I've got that connected up to my Homey Pro and basically I have it here available at the office. Now, what this would be really useful for is if you have like Z-Wave or Zigbee thermostat controls in different zones in your home. And then you have one central heating thermostat, which may or may not be smart, but this is a nice way to create a sort of zone-based thermostatic control schedule. And that's kind of what I'm gonna set up with Advanced Flow. And the great thing about Advanced Flow, you don't necessarily need it to do this, but the great thing is you have it all on one canvas. So you can tweak it to your liking a little bit easier than if it's split up into 10 different flows. Now, actually looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, actually in the weekend, I stand up a little bit later than during the week. So during the week, 7.30 is my usual get out of bed time, but on the weekends, maybe nine o'clock might be more suitable. So I can actually set this up as a schedule and well, the easiest way is just to copy and paste the flow card. So let's grab that. I can change the time to, instead of 7.30, we'll go to nine o'clock. Pull this line up there, cancel that line. So now I've set up a different time to trigger on a weekend that then sets the temperature in my room both in my living room and bedroom. And then depending on how many thermostat controls you have, you can add different zones to this and then have them, well, at different times. Oh, you get the point. It'll be a little bit different for your home likely than what I'm setting up here, but the concept remains the same. So one of the quickest ways, and well, one of the best things about it, advanced flows is that you can copy and paste a series of flow cards. So just highlight them and let's go ahead and copy and paste. I've done this before, but just to illustrate how great this is. Let's move the time to the afternoon. Let's say it's 17 o'clock. So afternoon after five o'clock. At that time, we're usually hanging out in the living room, you know, things are uh, out of my office at, at home. And um, I want the temperature to be a little bit warmer. So let's set this up to 21.5. Now I realized that I added an and condition here saying it's a weekend, but okay, when it's not a weekday, what is it? 
a weekend. So what I can do is actually grab these two for on the weekend, add them down here, and then draw a line for my weekend days. And the nice thing is these are different colors. So you'll see that orange in this case means that this and condition is not met, which then suggests it's a weekend, in which case I want it to be a different temperature than on a weekday. Now let's schedule when basically I'm going to bed. So actually within a couple minutes, I've set up a complete smart schedule for my heating. That's, well, first off, it happens at certain times a day, then when the flow basically starts to then adjust the heating. It checks, is it a weekday or a weekend? And dependent on that, it'll set the temperature in my living room and my bedroom. Now, depending on your home, you can set this to multiple different zones. You can have those zones at different levels at different times of days. You can even add in things like zone activity to then have zones basically heat up when a zone is active. And you can do that all from one place. That's really the great thing about advanced flow. You're working all from one canvas. Now you can go in and actually build your whole smart home in one advanced flow, but <laughs> In terms of you know, navigating it and figuring out uh, where what is, et cetera, I would suggest to kind of segment things up. So like I've done between lighting and climate control, you, know, you can have a couple of different advanced flows. Maybe you can have as many as you like, or you can have as little as you like. It's really up to you. And then you can also drag and drop advanced flows into flow folders. So I've got, for instance, automation here. Maybe my lighting advanced flow is better in my automation folder. You can see an advanced flow relatively easily because they have a different icon than actual uh, traditional flows, let's call them. So now I can switch between, well, the different advanced flows I've created. Now let's do one last advanced flow and I'm gonna take a look specifically at my doorbell. So it's a bit of a security oriented flow. So last but not least, let's take a look at an advanced flow for my doorbell. Now I've set up a really simple flow that likely you'll wanna create for every doorbell or smart doorbell you're connected to Homey. Number one, when the doorbell rings, then I want a sound to play off of my Sonos speaker. In this case, a doorbell sound. Now, if you don't have a Sonos speaker, you can also use, for instance, the Soundboard app, upload your own MP3 for a doorbell sound, and then have that link to another smart speaker that you have. The great thing about Sonos is it's built into the flow cards that you get available for your speakers. So it's a really nice addition to uh, the integration with Homey, pretty much. What I wanna show you is that you can actually test a flow from any point in an advanced flow. You right click on the flow card and then you can say test from here. Then it'll basically run through the advanced flow from that point. Now to illustrate, let's add a quick delay here of let's say five seconds. And then I'm actually just want the doorbell sound to play twice, just to make sure that I hear it the first time. Maybe we'll just lower this to three seconds. So. I'll just connect those up and now I can test it from this point. You'll hear the doorbell sound, three second delay with the animation, and then another doorbell sound. Now you can use delay cards anywhere in advanced flow and you can link up as many flow cards as you want to into that delay and then have them link to as many as you like out the other end. So it's a really nice um, tool to play with when you're wanting to add delays into certain automations that are happening. Now remember to exit your, uh, basically your testing. And now I wanna add, well, um, when motion is detected that I want actually a screenshot or snapshot to be sent to my mobile phone. And I can do that, well, quite easily. So let's add a when event for when the door doorbell senses some motion. Let's say motion is detected. Then I want, and this is a great place to use an any card. Basically, if the doorbell rings or motion is detected, then I want to send myself a push notification with the image capture of the doorbell. So let's add that in, link it up, select the snapshot image coming from. So this is quite cool actually. It's a nice little kind of intricate, uh, useful feature. So you can actually see where certain tags are coming from, right? So if I hover over snapshot 
here in this case, you'll see, uh, it's kind of hard to point at my screen here, but the um, first flow card I have for the doorbell rings is now highlighted. If I go down to the second snapshot, it's from the motion is detected and then a snapshot is created. So you have, in this case, it's the same uh, tag being generated, but if you have multiple tags and you're trying to figure out from where in your advanced flow those things come, you can basically use this little feature. It'll highlight where that tag is being created for then later use. It's a nice way to sort of, well, not really debug, but sort of go back through your flow and figure out where things are being generated and where you're taking them from. So let's create, um, well, let's choose one of these. Let's choose when the motion is detected. Now, a nice thing about this, and if you have experience with um, video doorbells, is sometimes when motion is, is captured, uh, it's nice to add a little delay, about one second, before you're actually generating a snapshot. Because, well, sometimes motion is captured, and then, well, if a person is walking past or walking towards the door, you wanna give them the chance to get a little bit closer right before that snapshot is generated. So I'm gonna add a short delay of one second here. So we'll just pop that down. I'll delete this connection so that that's always taken into account. And, oh yeah, don't forget to, if you want to add a message, someone is at the door. And then I can pick a user, so let's send it to myself. So what I'd like to do is I have a porch light or a front door light, right? And I want that to turn on when either motion is detected or if the doorbell rings. So I can add that as a then a card. So let's just use this uh, light strip for the outdoors. So let's say you have a really fancy <laughs> front door and you have a little uh, LED light strip set up, then you can use that as well. But let's say you have a smart light as your porch light, you can also then associate that in this case. So let's turn that on. So the doorbell rings, motion is detected. Those go through this any card. And then I want to link that up to basically turning on the light. Now let's organize this a little bit nicer. And then let's not forget to turn off the light after a 45 second delay. Let's duplicate this, and then replace it with turn off. Okay, so I've created an advanced flow for my doorbell. Now let's uh, test it, right? So if I test it from up here, you can follow the animation of the line to see how your flow flows. <laughs> um, so you'll hear the doorbell go twice because obviously someone's pressed the doorbell. You'll also see that the flow went down through the any card, then a one second delay and a snapshot was sent. Then my hue light strip, actually, which you'll see behind me has also turned on. And in a few seconds, it'll turn off again. So that's a really nice way of testing your advanced flows. Now this little error I do need to fix. This is maybe a nice moment to illustrate that you can also, from a card that errors, generate um, the rest of a flow if you want to. So for instance, I could have, if this card errors at any point for any reason, I can create a then event that, well, uh, maybe records the error to my notification timeline in the Homey app so that I can see if things error. Let's change this then in this case to a, let's go to a live snapshot and let's test it one more time. Get a live snapshot sent to me. Doorbell plays twice. Get a notification. And yeah, I can see um, in this case, the other side of the table because the, <laughs> The uh, video doorbell is just down there. Once you're done with an advanced flow, don't forget to save it, sort it out in the folders that you want to put it in, and then basically you're ready to go. So I hope you've been able to get some inspiration from this video. It's maybe a little bit long-winded, but with advanced flow, it's always useful to sort of go a little bit in depth. Try and make the most out of the free weekend, and I'll see you guys in the next video.